<laughs> but uh, let's move on to our final topic. Uh, Malik, take it away. Oh, man. I This past <laughs> weekend, I have sunk way too much time in a free-to-play hack and slash called Genshin Impact. And this is like a free-to-play action RPG. A lot of people have been brushing it off as a Breath of the Wild kind of clone. And that's fair because a lot of gaming clones and a lot of free-to-play clones come to the mobile market from, you know, Chinese developers. But what really stands out about this game is that it's not just for mobile, it's also on PC and PS4. Um, it's completely free. It does have microtransactions, but the story and the game world is comparable to Breath of the Wild. It is a casual action RPG that has a fully realized character system. They have a lot of different upgrade mechanics. There's cooking that gives you stats bonus like in Monster Hunter. Uh, you can switch out characters uh, just kind of like you could in Final Fantasy. It, it really touches, even the music, it touches on a lot of notes, and it kind of brings forth this idea of, are we going to see Chinese developers putting more effort into their games to kind of break out of this diluted marketplace? Because Genshin Impact is one of those games that you look at, and you're like, oh, that's cool, maybe it's not for me. But then you try it out, and it's just addicting. Something about the hack and slash combat mixed with some of those, you know, mobile gotcha mechanics it kind of hooks you in and brings out this world that has the potential to grow because they've already said that they've only uh your only access with your main character is to two of the islands which gives you two of the elements which is the geo and the wind elements but they plan on expanding and giving your main character access to all of the elements while you can unlock heroes that have specific elements that they use so they're trying to make sure that you have one hero that can do everything if you wanted to, or you could buy additional heroes for different elements. So I just kind of wanted to open up the floor to you guys and what you think about, you know, how China has a big misconception with they only want mobile and free to play yeah. versus now that we're starting to see these big AAA titles starting to be developed and thought about. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think it's necessarily a misconception they have. I think mobile is working really great in Asia right. and like it's making them lots of money. It's mm -hmm. just about how to diversify, you know, the the business hat comes on. I don't have my right. business hat here today, but <laughs> um and it's just about how to how to diversify your assets, right? And enter new yeah. markets to secure yeah. more money for your company, right? And when I first saw Genshin Impact because I'm a huge Zelda fan. Uh, those in chat and you guys know, um, I felt like I was personally being attacked. Okay. <laughs> um, I felt like it was a huge ripoff. I was saying I will never try it again, especially because the enemies in the trailer are pretty much bull goblins with like Yiga clan mask on them. So like, I don't understand um, the why it rips it off so <laughs> much like it's not just the art style it's like everything in the game is a ripoff yeah. of breath of the wild i don't understand how nintendo cannot go after them but after seeing some gameplay i feel like i may be a traitor to my beloved franchise like i don't know what to do <laughs> do i try this game out uh, don't i i i, I love seeing competitors because like the plus side the positive aspect to this and having like ripoffs is you can see what works uh for a game like breath of the wild um and mm -hmm. hack and slash works right like even breath right. of the wild had hack and slash elements to it that works really well um so you could see right. that and it would be interesting to see the breath of the wild 2 i know it's like supposed to be close to finishing development um but if they introduce any mechanics from Genshin, like, you know, can I, they learn off the ripoff? Well, if you look at it also, if you look at Hyrule Warriors too, the, yes. the combat there is very similar to Genshin. So I think it, I think it would be wise because Genshin is free to play and it does kind of have a small audience right now that it is hitting with because Chinese games fail to make an impact in Western audiences. They just, something right. about them fails to connect with Western audiences. And that's both Europe and North America. Mm -hmm. But I think that Nintendo would be wise to look at what Genshin Impact does well. And also, too, a lot of other companies would be wise to look at, well, 
what if we make a potential triple A action open world RPG, make it free to play, lock all the heroes behind a paywall, put mm-hmm. microtransactions in it, and now instead of the free to play battle royales with battle passes, we have free to play action RPGs and you know we start to move towards primarily microtransactions. See, I, I you just saying that got me really scared. You know, I was like, oh God, I'm poor. I'm gonna have to like mortgage my house. I'm gonna be well, living on this. Well, street. not only that, but we see it all the time where a studio will look at the success of another studio and say, How can we replicate this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The moment that we see like AAA games start, you know, I don't want to say cutting corners, but almost cutting corners where they're like, okay, we're going to hide all this stuff behind a paywall. It's going to be free to play, but you got to pay for heroes, whether uh, regions in the everything. game, everything. Yeah, yeah. Like that really scares me in terms of and, what the Western uh, studios are going to start doing. And I think a lot of studios learned from the failures of Battlefront um, in terms mm. of how microtransactions yeah. yep. aren't received well in the North American markets, especially with our how gaming worked out here. Like we did not have a huge booming mobile scene um, as they did in Asia, which yeah. can more yeah. validate a long lasting title with microtransactions because you're playing on the go, you're paying little money here and there. They, they've they established that uh, equation of how you should game or how you should buy games or how games make mm-hmm. money for yep. decades that has yeah. not been established here on that scale so i don't th- think we'll see that um but what right. we can see is the more the introduction of um how rpgs could work differently or how AAA titles could work on mobile um mm-hmm. that's more interesting to me in terms of what we learn from like all of these huge com- like studios in asia that are just doing phenomenal jobs with the the types of games that they're putting out. I want to see that type of um, effort go into mobile games here and making them so they could stand out. Like if you have a title that's just releasing on mobile and have the level of quality that Genshin has would be amazing for North America. Um, And I don't think we've really seen that. So that's what I'm hoping. And I think too, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, please. Oh, I was going to say, I think a lot of people, I think it was really put in the forefront of a lot of people's eyes of how many Fortnite players are actually on Apple iOS. Mm. Yeah. That or the Apple OS. I think that when the whole lawsuit happened, seeing the numbers, everyone truly realized, hold on. Fortnite is, especially mobile, is huge. And if you yeah. look in Asia, PUBG, their esports scene isn't played on PC. It's on mobile. PUBG Mobile is their prime, is like a yes. huge, huge. They have tournaments scene. in like everything mm-hmm. um, for PUBG Mobile. And yeah. our mobile market isn't as booming here, but I think there's so much potential. And you know what? Maybe as the years go on and mobile does start to boom here, we will develop that understanding of microtransactions. But I think because we hold triple A to being packaged as Mm -hmm. at a certain price tag and delivering on all of those aspects we would want it still won't change or sway what we expect from like say a triple a title on console but it may change how we see mobile gaming in the quality we would be willing to pay for microtransactions to get like a good gaming experience on mobile especially as we see like project x cloud and more cloud services um being introduced to us and how that little sub industry in gaming uh, develops as it becomes more accessible it'll be interesting to see how uh asia comes into the market on that front yeah, yeah i would i would love to because i i'm always scared of like those free-to-play elements breaking into the console market that always scares me because that's <laughs> that's that's when you start like getting into like the bottom of the barrel in a lot of ways but to Camille's point, I would love to see like the console structure make its way onto the mobile where a game shouldn't like a studio shouldn't be afraid of saying we we're gonna charge sixty dollars for this mobile game because it's that good. Because yeah, right. we put that much effort into it. Um, um and, yeah. Yeah. So I, I would I would love to see that that kind of transpire. And if a game can like uh, Genshin uh can can do that in the future, by all means do it. Yeah. And I would also love to see too- that. 
one thing that makes Genshin Impact so scary and one thing that a lot of people are talking about is the fact that you can take your account and you can go play, go from playing on PC to PS4 to on your Which phone. Which is beautiful. Mm. So you, That's and beautiful. The combat oh, feels the safe. same. Yeah. The, the combat just goes all the way across. And then, you know, that includes iPads and laptops. They they make it so that way it's you have this Breath of the Wild almost experience across every platform. You can yeah. play it anywhere, everywhere. Mm-hmm. You can play with your friends. You can That's play with awesome. random people. It, it's one of those, like they're really trying to push yeah it's crazy in this year of like big tempo releases like something like a massive ip like avengers or Mm -hmm. with cyberpunk or with the last of us part two ghost of tsushima like all these big games Mm -hmm. still the ones that reign supreme of 2020 are uh, a a 20 (laughs) dollar battle royale game with jelly beans or free (laughs) a free-to-play shooter yeah yeah, or or like or what? Among Us, a five dollar <laughs> little yeah. indie game that was made by two people that came two out two years ago, years ago. Yeah. or Genshin Impact, another free to play game. It's it's crazy, and and honestly, it puts it in perspective when you look at something. Not to call out any of the developers or the people that worked on something like Avengers or any of the other big releases that come out this year, but it just it's interesting to look at that something so simplistic that just has a really good premise, a really good foundation is all it takes for yes. people to want to play the game. Yeah, hell, yeah. you even look at something uh, like Phasmophobia, um, yeah. like a horror game. It's Granted, it might be taking, like, it might be riding a little bit of a way because we're in October, everyone's kind of in the mood for something like that. But at the same time, still, just this small little indie game that has a very basic premise, and there's people playing it like crazy. Yeah, And it's just interesting to look at, interesting to put it in perspective in comparison to big games like Avengers, to big games coming up like Cyberpunk, where they're trying so hard to, to you know, dot their I's, cross their T's. When you look at something like Among Us, Fall Guys, all that, that, that are just like, hey, here's this basic, simple premise. Play, right? yeah. have fun. And that's all it takes. Um, I do want to highlight a um, comment in chat. 4G says, it's great, but I really would have preferred a payment system through Steam. I understand oh, why uh, they went around it, but there's a nice bit of security for end users when yeah. games are released on platforms like Epic, GOG, or Steam. Um, I, I, I think that's a very North American perspective. Yeah. I think um, because we are not comfortable with microtransactions to the um, frequency of like like the Asian mobile gaming market or just gaming in general there, how their RPGs work, we're not comfortable with making those transactions um, through like just one game. Um, mm. But maybe it is like they, in order to make microtransactions more a thing or like this, something like Genshin Impact work, it needs to be tied to a platform like Epic Steam um, yeah. in order for users to feel comfortable. Uh, that That's a really, I'd never thought of that. Um, so I, I just want to highlight that one. Caboose, I'm wondering yeah. because just before you were speaking, you were pretty quiet. I know you play a lot of fighting games, a lot of superhero yeah. games. What would it take you to want to download and play a game on mobile? Like, is there a fighting game that you think, because fighting games are also very different on mobile, um, <laughs> that you would want to play? Or like a hero, a superhero game that like would capture your attraction that would make you want to buy like suits, for example, in Spider-Man as microtransactions and paint into that? Uh, I mean, there are a couple of mobile games that I've dabbled into, but none of them, like it just... I just can't be captivated the way that I am when I'm playing on console with a controller in my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just it's just a preference thing. I respect and completely appreciate some of the things that are done there. I mean, hell, I, I visited NetherRealm uh, last year, NetherRealm Studios last year back, I believe, in like February, uh, before Mortal Kombat 11 was coming out. And they were touring us through their studio. And I remember part of them, like they were explaining their mobile division, like they have a whole part of the studio dedicated to their mobile games and they said like this never existed um <laughs> we put out that first injustice mobile game and it went so ballistic that we drilled a hole into a wall of the studio and built a whole section for mobile games that's just that's how awesome. big that stuff got like the, how big that stuff is you mm-hmm. know and 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 i respect that and i appreciate that 
It's just for me as a, like for my personal preference, it's just not for me. Yeah. That's think, fair. Yeah. And what the other half of this too, is that we are now seeing China's first, and this is kind of crazy is that China's first triple a game is in development and it's called black myth Wukong. Um, yeah. I talked about it a little while ago. Uh, I think it was about a month ago on the stream and it is just the, really this true to nature, just beautiful representation of their culture and mythology. And it is one of these things where when you hear that China has their, this is going to be their first AAA game, it really puts into perspective what the gaming audience and market is over in, you know, Asia audiences. We have very different mindsets of how games should yeah. be played, how they should be developed, what they should look like. And for them to start developing the first AAA game that is true to their culture, that is going to be really cool because that is going to be something that separates the free-to-play gotcha games coming out of China and the next generation of PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, you know, these big AAA Chinese titles that they're capable of but just haven't been able to push out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be interesting too to see like if that game does include microtransactions because I feel also yeah. some of these like games from China, um, if they're trying to hit in North America, they know that microtransactions don't work the same. So if they're looking to create a AAA title like to what we believe a AAA title to be in North mm -hmm. America, it'll be interesting to see how they adapt to that and how successful they are at adapting to having a game that offers really great quality, which I think they'll be able to do. It's a no brainer, um, yeah. but also translating well to the audience here. And I think that's going to be the real test. Even if you look at it on the flip side with how mobile gaming will translate here as we go into a new generation, that's going to have cloud gaming accessible on multiple devices. Mm -hmm. I, I think we will see a change. We're at a really exciting point in gaming in general. We're entering a new generation of console gaming, a new way to play on multiple devices. It's becoming more more accessible yeah. for people um so it's gonna be interesting to see what will happen in the world of gaming in the next five ten years we'll 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 just have to you know hold on tight and wait and see and continue to talk about it right here on the squad cast um that is it for today everyone uh thank you for joining us i want to ask each of you what are you up to uh steve let's start with you what new articles sure. are you working on on the squad state website I'm trying to get out a couple things on the new season of uh, Call of Duty Warzone season. Oh my second, God! Last week we um, got to talk. We yeah, got to talk, talk the subway, man. <laughs> yeah, the subways are now open. <laughs> uh, fast travel is in Warzone. It's it's exciting times, and I'm really looking forward to what they're setting up for Halloween. I think it's going to be a really cool event. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So we could expect some guides coming out. I could read some guides yeah. on the. Yeah. Okay. All right. All yeah. right. So I'll have to catch yeah. that out on the Good. website. How about yeah. you, Malik? <laughs> Uh, I am working on a lot of Genshin Impact articles, a whole lot of guides, sure. just kind of walking people through it. There's seven different kinds of currencies, so writing a guide on that so people wow. get a little bit of an explanation. Uh, and then Ghost of Tsushima Legends is coming out next week. Expect a lot of coverage. I'm going to do a very extensive article breaking down the trailer, kind of picking apart some of the pieces so people can get excited. We have to, we were talking about this before, but I think we, we should squat up and we should all play Absolutely. Legends together. Sure. Yeah. Caboose already called uh, Samurai. He's, yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Caboose. Uh, Caboose, what do you have coming to you this week? Uh, well, Ed Boon literally just tweeted that the new DLC reveal is coming this week for Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, so I'm just going to be preparing <laughs> for that uh, and getting ready for that. There are new also uh, skins coming to uh, Mortal Kombat as well. The Halloween skins that they, look add, pretty... they added those. They added they, those. They, so can yeah. we find that content on your channel? Right now, I haven't uploaded anything in regards to that. I am streaming a little bit of Mortal Kombat 11, though. I'm getting back into playing with the viewers and stuff like that. So if you want to check me out, you know, socials, Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK, twitch.tv forward slash Caboose, youtube.com forward slash Caboose. 
All right. I'll have to check it out uh, for myself. I'll be here every Monday with the squad and the crew. But in the meantime, I'll also be on our TV show. If you don't know, squad is actually a TV show. We air on Jinx TV as well as Amazon Prime and Apple TV. So you should check it out because we have lots of fun. Uh, but you could also check me on my socials at this is Camco um, everywhere else. And yeah, I I'll probably be reading a lot of articles on the website as well. Squadstate.com as I try to improve my season six game in Warzone. So I'll be looking forward to that. Um, I'm sorry, Dollar Yen, you just missed out on the podcast, but guess watch what? Watch the VOD. You can watch the VODs. So make sure to do that. Thank you guys so much. If you have any ideas for any topics that we should discuss, make sure to tweet us at Squad State. Until then, we will see you next time.